Hi guys, so I just wanted to say that today I'm filming a video which is pretty much our whole schedule. Every single thing that we're doing, today's a Wednesday which means we do science. It's going to be kind of like a day in the life video except I am not going to be showing my daughter at all or having her talk. So it won't be like the real um, homeschool day in the sense that you won't get, like you won't hear her reading. So it mainly will be me kind of discussing before and after what we did throughout the day. So sorry, but yeah. So Thanks so much if you're sticking around, and thanks so much to everyone who watches. Okay, so you guys, so before I start filming what she's doing today, um, like I mentioned, she's not going to be in the video, but I'm just filming like her work and stuff as we do it. So I want to talk about our schedule real quick. So we're, we're middle, we're mid-year, fourth grade, and Monday through Thursday we do homeschool. Friday's kind of a layback day. So Monday through Thursday we do math, language arts, and then art on mondays and wednesdays after we finish those three subjects we add in science and then on tuesdays and thursdays after we do the you know math language arts and then art we do history and geography and then on fridays she does like kind of like an expansion like an extra art project if she wants to based kind of on the art she did monday through thursday and then she also does Beast Academy workbooks because we switched from Beast Academy to Saxon Math. So we still kind of have all those workbooks from Beast Academy. So I still have her do those kind of like for logic on Fridays. Okay, and then her reading schedule. So Monday through Friday, she does morning reading on her own while she's eating breakfast. She usually eats like oatmeal or cereal or something like that. So it's, you know, she... um sits at the table she has a little a little book reader i'm going to show you guys in the video a little book holder sorry and so she reads whatever she wants like usually middle grade fiction usually fantasy so that's like could be 30 40 minutes not not usually 40 but i take the dogs out in the morning you know i i make my own breakfast i do different random things so she's not required to start homeschool until i'm ready so she just does her morning routine brushing her teeth all that stuff and then so like i said she's reading in the morning whatever she wants and then after she's like done with her morning routine and i'm ready to start homeschool in that meantime while she's waiting for me sometimes she'll still read like after she brushes her teeth and gets dressed and then when i'm ready we start homeschool it kind of depends we're not like i don't like set a timer we're kind of like late night people we have trying to go to bed earlier lately but um you know we might we might read like we do nighttime reading too as like a family like we'll all kind of read whatever we want before bed and so for example if we go to sleep at like 10 30 11 then we kind of just wake up whenever like between like 9 or 10 her reading so she does the reading the morning reading and then whatever she wants and then after homeschool monday through thursday after she's done everything uh, the whole schedule she has a timed reading for 35 minutes that is one of the books that we chose at the beginning of the school year as she gets older, I have her help me choose those books. It's it's all pretty much middle grade fiction, but I do kind of variety of classics and then like she likes fantasy. So she has a time reading then. And then on Fridays, I call it nonfiction Fridays for now. And on Fridays, she has to read a nonfiction book for 35 minutes. And that's usually a book that is kind of like an extra book that's from our history or our science curriculum. So yeah, so that's our schedule right now. I just wanted to share that real quick. Hi guys, so basically the first thing she does is she reads her own personal reading. She has this little book holder, I'll show you guys. And so right now she is actually rereading Escape from Atlantis and then she's actually finishing up Unwanted's, Unwanted's Quest, Dragon's Ghost. This is book three by Lisa McMahon. So, yeah, so she's going to finish this up while she's eating. She'll probably finish it, and then she's going to log it in her book journal because she only has a few pages left. And then this, she's just kind of reading if she has time or uh, with, throughout the day in her personal reading time. And that's her little book holder. It's kind of made this size for, like, smaller paperbacks. We've kind of, she's been having it for, I don't know, probably years. I'll link it if I can find it on Amazon. I don't know if they, like, it's not even a brand on it. But um, we also use a larger one 
for our larger homeschool books. So this one actually has a little logo that says Best Book Stand. And so this one is what we're gonna use for our nonfiction throughout the day. And we just kind of put this on the kitchen table. So yeah, so right now I'm gonna let her go ahead and finish her reading and her food. And then I'll catch up with you guys when we start our next thing, which will be math. This is the first thing she does for Saxon 5-4, which is the test and worksheet section. So she's already did it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and check it. This is facts, practice, test. This is the multiplication two five squares that used to use, um, sorry, used with the lesson she's doing today. So I'm gonna just kind of go through real quick and check it. And then right now she's already moved on and she's doing her lesson practice for the day. So I checked this real quick. She forgot to do one, but instead of interrupting her while she's doing her other work, I just went ahead and answered it and then just told her the answer and then, because she just forgot. And then this one's the only one she got wrong. And I just put a little ch uh, check mark just to notify myself that I checked it. So now I'm just going to eat my breakfast while I wait for her to finish her math. So for lesson 37, reading fractions and mixed numbers from a number line, this is what we're on today. So, and so yeah, so that's what she's starting now after she finished reading. So now she's done lesson 37 and I'm gonna go ahead and I got out the solutions manual and I'm going to go ahead and start checking it. And she really didn't have any questions. So I just finished checking her math and she got a lot wrong when it came to the number line fractions. So after work, my husband's gonna go over these with her because I am terrible at fractions. I think this is more about the number line. So I'm actually gonna go back and read through this too. See so if I can explain it to her, if not, he will. But everything else she got, she got, she did pretty good. She got a few wrong. Uh, otherwise, she got majority of them right, and then a couple she skipped, so I had her redo them. And yeah, so she did pretty good otherwise. So just a couple little mistakes, and everything else was right, other than the number line fractions, which we're gonna go over. So yeah, so we've so she's basically finished with math. So now she's gonna do this multiplication board, and we usually set the timer on this outfit on our phone. So we either do five or ten minutes, depending on the day, but um. I think today she'll do, I don't know, maybe like five minutes. So here's part of our day in the life. <laughs> our shelf collapsed and obviously, you know, we have some really heavy books here. So my husband is going to reinforce it underneath with some, like a strip of wood. So yeah. And um, yeah, that's what happened. So we have kind of just our books all over the floor. So yes, yeah, so our books are kind of just hanging out on the floor and we're going to redo it sorry but yeah that's what's when you have so many books you have to keep adding bookshelves <laughs> keep redoing the bookshelves and actually we're running out of space on these, these bookshelves anyway so yeah but um that's what happened today collapse so now that she's finished with math um also want to mention that the reason we do math first is because my husband works specific hours and we're central so he starts work a little bit later so he's able to kind of help her usually in the mornings with math so that's why we do math first and then now we're moving on to um, the rest of our homeschool day and so the first thing she does is she does her book log if she needs to so she did she went ahead and she finished this this morning unwanted's quest uh book three i believe yes so she's going to go ahead and write it in her book log and then so yeah she's starting that right now She's gonna go on to start her journal where she just writes the date and then she picks a word in this hello world. So now using book. the hello world book, she's going to pick a word and she's gonna do her daily writing the date in her journal, a uh, planner, not really journal. And then, um, so she's gonna pick, she already said she wanted to do Asia today. So I think yeah, she had it on Asia and then She's gonna go ahead and read a pick a word, read it out loud, and then mark it on her planner for fun, just for language and word recognition. Normally, while we do homeschool, I play classical music. I 
I have a few different playlists I made, and then I sometimes just listen on Spotify to different artists. I really, really, really love Philip Glass. I love Chopin. And I usually do like classical for studying. I think they have like a playlist on Spotify. So I can't play it though in the video because of copyright infringement, but yeah, so usually it's not dead quiet. <laughs> we uh, listen to classical music, especially Philip Glass. She does her journal, um, uh, sorry, planner. She goes on to do handwriting. So we've actually already completed the fourth grade handwriting without tears book and now she's just gonna do this little extra thing that we got i think we got this like in third grade but we're gonna go what i do is i just uh, write sentences for her to write or she'll write like a paragraph and it's just to get uh, more cursive practice because we've already completed her cursive workbook so now we're gonna move on to draw right now which is print handwriting So now she's gonna write her sentence and I just have her write one sentence a day, Monday through Thursday, and then on Thursday she finishes up and she goes ahead and colors it. And then she adds a little bit to the drawing every day. finish and this is just from her last two uh, weeks and then so yeah so we're finished with now she's gonna go on to do her daily word ladder which let's see where you are oh we're getting almost close to the end of this okay. so she's gonna do oh, her daily word ladder she's gonna do vocabulary and these are the two books she's using. So she's gonna go ahead and put this on the this book. This is today's page and we're on week 24. And she said she's gonna choose the word residence. And she will do that in her vocabulary notebook. Now she's finished with vocabulary and she's moving on to growing with grammar. And so we're gonna go ahead and put this on our little book stand and to the next section that we're on. So she's on the chapter six review and she has to read it. And then if she has any questions, she'll ask me. It's like the end of the chapter review and then yeah. And then she'll go on to do the workbook and I'll so check it. I have the growing with grammar answer key and I'm not the best in grammar, so I definitely use it and I am going to go ahead and check it so the review was four pages and so I only had her do two and then so tomorrow which will be uh well actually it's three pages I could have had her finish it today actually uh usually the review is sometimes three four pages so I just had her do two pages that's fine and then tomorrow she'll finish it up and do the diagramming so I went ahead and checked the chapter six review and she got most of it right she got a few wrong and we talked about uh, why I usually show her the corrections after and we go over them either very orally or both that's what we just did and then she pretty much got all the ones in the back correct so that's good and so now we're moving on to our oral reading and that will complete language art so we're doing that so next. every day we do a poem for every day of the year in this book and today is January 18th William Carlos Williams when we think about poetry, we usually think about carefully measured lines that end in rhymes, but not all poetry is rhymed. In fact, the majority of modern poetry is rhymeless, but there is still rhythm, even without rhyme. And poets like William Carlos Williams are experts in harnessing the invisible powers of sound, found here in the image of the musical wind. Again, I reply to the triple winds, running chromatic filths of derision outside my window. Play louder. You will not succeed. I am bound more to my senses the more you batter at me to follow you. And the wind, as before, fingers perfectly its derisive music. For our read aloud, we're continuing actually to read Skunk and Badger by Anne 
Amy Timberlake. The skunk nodded seriously. I will get rocket potato later. The bowl clunked back onto the counter and skunk continued to cook. A few minutes later, Skunk laid a plate of scrambled eggs with fire-roasted peppers in front of Badger. Badger knew what to do next. He forked it up and put it in his mouth. Oh, mmm. Skunk shook out a napkin. Tuck this under your chin. Badger tucked the napkin under his chin and forked up more eggs. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Thereafter, followed the promised breakfast hot chocolate. Yes. And a basket of strawberry cinnamon muffins. A basket. After everything else came roasted fingerling fingerling potatoes skunk apologized for the potatoes coming last i get the order i'm sorry i get eating order wrong sometimes but with breakfast i do not mind terribly skunk sat down with his own plate of potatoes breakfast is the nicest meal he said badger nodded vigorously skunk continued because breakfast is the nicest meal you should have candlelight at breakfast if at all possible sometimes it's not possible sometimes you're eating when sorry where there is not a candle or sometimes there is a candle shortage and no one has candles. That is sad, particularly for breakfast. And here's just the image of them. Breakfast is the nicest meal. Now I'm gonna have her continue reading. So she's gonna continue and probably read like a page or a page and a half, wherever she feels like stopping uh, off camera. And so yeah, so we're gonna continue reading a little bit more and then that's gonna uh, end our oral reading for this the day. This is a book that we use daily for art, Us for Activities, 365 Things to Draw and Paint. And so she's gonna go ahead and turn to we started this page on Monday, and I'm filming this on Wednesday. So it's uh, robots, and they wanted you to do collage, but we decided just, I told her just to go ahead and do it with marker or markers or colored pencils, because we actually did collage last week. So I just thought we would just do our own variation, and so she already started, and this is her robot, and so here is our book uh, cart, sorry. Here is our homeschool cart where she has a variety of art supplies and things like that so she's going to go ahead and choose some things to go ahead and work on that artwork a little bit more She's finishing up her art for today and then she will work on it a little bit more tomorrow and then that will be finished for the robot for the week the assignment for the so week. So this is everything we're using for science so far today she does this first and then she reads like a fact out of it random facts and then this is like the main book we're using for blossom and root wonders of the animal kingdom and so I'm gonna get this stuff out and see what we're doing today is turn to whatever facts she wants and that's the first thing she's going to do for science normally she will read it but since i mentioned in the beginning i'm not having her talk or do too much in this video because of the restrictions i've experienced okay so which fact do you want to just point to it okay you're gonna talk about how fast these animals this is a student swim. notebook i just kind of put it in a clip i didn't really bind it and these are the narration drawings and the paragraphs that she's been doing, which has mostly been focused on animals. And now we're complete. We're finished doing the animals. So today she will be doing migration and seasonal adaptation. So I will go ahead and get out my computer so I can read what Blossom and Root uh, has for me to uh, mention for the key facts for this section and then we're going to see what books they uh, reference using uh, if not the animal one and I'm going to get back. Wonder number 28 migrations and seasonal adaptations and I'm going to go ahead and read they have 13 big picture, picture messages to focus on so I'll go ahead and I'm going to read that out loud to her and then we're gonna move on to do the book suggestions that she suggests to read along with it. And then my daughter is gonna do the notebook. So we just finished reading the uh, curriculum via my computer for that went with Lesson 28 for Blossom and Root. And so now we're gonna go ahead and use the DK Animal Book, which this is a two page spread on migration that, she's, that the curriculum suggested. And so, so we're gonna go ahead and read this out loud together. 
and then she will probably choose i'll probably have her choose a specific type of animal that she wants to um pick for her writ her drawing illustration and then her written narration on that decided that she wanted to do her illustration and write about swallows so then we got out the dk life cycles book and they have a section on swallows and they talk a little bit about their migration so she's going to use these two books for her information and she might also use um the computer if we don't because i don't think we have any other books about migration so she's actually gathering some more books on the bookshelf about migration and i just want to show you guys so i'm actually we're actually homeschooling at our dining room table and that's where we've been homeschooling for the entire um bit of fourth grade we were homeschooling in our office but the office has a lot more stuff in it now. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. So yeah, so we just kind of have a homeschool cart. We have two carts. We have a book cart, and then we have the art supplies-ish cart. And then we kind of just have that in here, and then we have this dining room table. We clear the whole table after we're finished homeschooling. We put everything on the bookshelves. And yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing. It's kind of, I mean, it's not ideal. We, all, we have like a three-bedroom house, but my husband uses one entire room for an office. So, yeah, it's kind of, and we have a laundry room in there, which is weird. So, we don't really have an extra room in our house to homeschool. So, it's just kind of what we're doing. I'll think about possibly making a video showing this whole room. Is Sid our homeschool friend? Sid is our homeschool friend. She's waiting for her to finish her bird migration. Sid is our homeschool friend. So she used DK Animal as the main book and then she also used DK Life Cycles. And so this is her little illustration and narration. If you want to look at a hardcore traveler, the swallow is a perfect match. The bird flies to Africa for the winter and in the spring they fly to Europe, have babies, return to Africa in the winter, repeat. Plus along the way, sorry, plus along the travel, many birds die from exhaustion, starvation, Sorry, that's my dog playing, and storms. But somehow hundreds of swallows survive. But barn swallows also live worldwide except Antarctica. So I'm really happy with that. Science Mondays and Wednesdays. And so now that we're finished science, she is gonna go on and do, we're pretty much finished for homeschool for the day other than her reading. So I'm gonna show you guys what she's gonna be reading independently. Today and that will she will be reading, continuing The Witch of Blackbird Pond. She's about halfway through. And this is for her daily reading after homeschool. She sets a timer for 35 minutes and she reads for 35 minutes and that completes homeschool for the day. Thanks you guys so much for joining us. Sorry that I couldn't have a full video, you know, as we did things with her. But like I said, I'm being cautious because of what happened with my last channel. Thanks you guys so much for watching, subscribing, liking.